Well, hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Take Back My Brain. I am so excited about our guest today because I'm going to learn all of his ins and outs today along with you because I actually just met him. So I have had a lot of good uh, referrals to him say, oh my gosh, you have to interview Dr. Ken Cooper because he goes along with everything that I love to talk about. And so Dr. Ken Cooper has been in practice for 33 years and I just want to welcome him to the show. So thanks for coming on, Dr. Ken. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Yeah. Tell Happy everybody where you're located. And So uh, our, our center is called Cooperstown, like the Baseball Hall of Fame. Okay. Cooperstown Chiropractic. It is in Fullerton, California. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're in Southern California. We're about the city north of Disneyland. Yeah. A little far away from Cooperstown, actually. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. Here, though. Cooperstown. Here. Cooperstown is in your heart, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's so great. That's so great. So tell us a little bit about your area of expertise, because I am so excited to talk about this. Yeah. So, you know, as my children were young, um, I realized that I, I needed to really upgrade my knowledge of pediatrics. So I went back to school and got learned my pediatric degree. And uh, along that way, and then in that pathway, I also have an advanced degree in functional medicine. Wow. So uh, looking at those two things and combining that, you know, I've seen a lot of people and I've dealt with a lot of problems, but I was I always struggled with um, the brain and particularly with concussion. And I had my own daughter have a concussion and that really led me into uh, the study. And so for the last um, seven years, I've been in in deep study um, as to how to fix concussions. But in all honesty, it's been something that's been at least the last 15 years. Sure. So uh, what I've been really able to do is to take some of the most brilliant research that's been put out and make it to where the everyday practitioner can understand it. Mm -hmm. And the everyday practitioner can you know, uh, make this functional change for people. And, um, and, and it's been pretty tremendous. We've had amazing, amazing, amazing results. That's fantastic. So I yeah. think when when we're talking about concussions, concussions, I think, are really misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. You think, right? Yeah. So what would you say are some of the com common misunderstandings about concussions? Okay. So let's talk about an awareness first. Okay. So yeah, most, of us, most of us understand like a physical concussion, like I hit my head. Mm -hmm. Right. Or my, my son fell out of bed, you know, or grandma fell while she was out doing the gardening. Right. So we, we kind of concept those things, but what most of us don't really consider is that there's also chemical concussions mm -hmm. and there's biological concussions. So not necessarily where I am, but I was consulting with a doctor just not an hour ago. That's up in the Pacific Northwest um, in Bellevue, Washington. And he had a patient that had a particular problem. And what he and I had to talk about was he's like, well, there was no mechanism of injury. I said, yeah, but you guys have high levels of mold up there. Right. And so mold right. can be one of those things. Heavy metal toxicity. So, you know, take in a flu shot and, you know, put yourself into that, that realm of, um, of heavy metal toxicity, lead toxicity. I mean, that research that came out years ago about uh, children, and it's not right on the tip of my tongue, but it, it was if you gave a child like between five and eight years old, one cup of most hot chocolates, they hit their lead toxic level for about the next 30 days. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're like, wow, that's, that's just something to know. So there is physical concussions, there's chemical concussions, there's, you know, uh, toxin, you know, like immune challenges, food allergens, um, <laughs> heavy metals, toxic substances that all can cause this. So, but let's kind of talk about some of the, some of the, the reality of the numbers. Um, here's our statistics. 3 million adults over the age of 65 go to the emergency room every year because they fell and hit their head. Really? Right. Yes. Four million athletes uh, report concussions annually. Okay. And this statistics was even crazier. 
6.8% of children under 17 years old, right, in 2020, reported either concussion or brain, brain injury. So when we looked at the census, we looked at there was 73 million children in that category. Okay. We're talking about that's another 5 million people. That's 33,000 people a day. Yeah. It's insanity. And the problem is, is that most providers don't know what to do. And most parents are clueless as to what happens. And, and, and are we talking just about the physical concussion? You're not talking about chemical or biological. No, that's that's, just, that's physical. just the physical. Concussion. That's just the physical. So, so we started this, this, uh, attempt to save the world's brains mm -hmm. that's, a, that's really what we were doing and yeah. and the more brains we can save you know the better our society is going to be yeah yeah so out of all those concussions um especially with our kids you know because they're still developing right so concussions right. you know hinder development mentally Absolutely. physically emotionally right behaviorally Behaviorally, yes. You know, my daughter's had two concussions, like I shared with you, like right before we started, you know. Yeah. And after that first one, she got that when she was six. And, mm -hmm. you know, she was a challenging child. And, you know, yeah. people who don't understand concussions, which I didn't completely at that time understand right. the magnitude of all of that. But to watch her go from being able to read, you know, basic books at six and do, you know, one plus one and two plus two to that being totally gone. Right. And then to see her behavior change or to ramp up, you know, already things that may have been challenging with her to start with, you know, she became, she was a challenging child. And yep. if people don't understand that that's concussion related, they just think, I one, you're a bad parent or two, the kid's just naughty. Right. And, and she, well, she wasn't being naughty. Right. Uh, she just didn't know what was going on. And then you add head trauma pain to that or voices in your head or whatever it might be. Right. It's traumatic. Right. And so that's that's one of the things that most people are unaware of. Again, when we talk about awareness, most people are unaware of what are what are the symptoms we're really looking for? And and the ones that I would say, you know, like all the executive functions, attention, concentration, short term memory, patience, temper, mental balance, emotional balance, uh, being able to process. In other words, if you're going to read something, you can read it the first time and understand it rather than having to read it three or four times to get it. Right. So those are the classic symptoms. But here's a crazy one. Are you familiar with a condition that's called IBS, irritable bowel syndrome? Yes. All right. Did you know that almost 70 to 80 percent of IBS sufferers started as a concussion? I did not know that. Yeah. Is that crazy? Because the very first thing that happens within a few hours of that trauma is the gut dysregulation. Sure. Right. And that's that's like the primary Tell us thing. why. Why is it? Why? Why does that gut dysregulation happen? Well, because in the trauma, what happens is we have signals that are sent from our brain through our cranial nerves. And particularly the, the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve is the one that goes to your heart and it goes to your lungs and your stomach and your gut and your bladder. And, and that's the one you'll be, be familiar with. Like if you're watching a, a scary movie and something frightening happens and you're like, oh, yeah. my God, I'm in my pants. Right. That's the vagus nerve. So. The vagus nerve communicates both from the brain to the gut, but also from the gut to the brain. So what we found out recently, and and one of the doctors that I speak to quite often was the guy that uh, was given $40 million from the National Institute of Health to prove the gut-brain connection. He proved that 90% of the information that flows in that nerve does not go from the brain to the gut, but from the gut to the brain. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So dysregulation is the primary thing or one of the very first things that's going to happen. And so in that child, now we see, and so as a provider, one of the things I listen for is I listen for the mom saying, yeah, so it's crazy because my three-year-old poops once a week. That's gut dysregulation. Definitely. You're eating, you're eating twice a day. You're supposed to poop twice a day, right? right There's right. a problem. That, that to me goes up as a big flag. You know, and then when we got like the older child, let's say the, junior high school, high school athlete, and they, you know, have an ACL injury in their knee. Yeah. 
a, a, a child has had a concussion has a four times higher likelihood of blowing out an ACL. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, again, these are like some of these symptoms that, you know, and everybody understands the brain fog and understands the behavior and understands the emotional thing. They don't correlate all of these other things. And that's part of the awareness and therefore the education. Right. So when you're talking about blow it out the ACL, let's go back to that for just a second. Yeah. Is that because there's a dysregulation, say, imbalance or aware, spatial awareness or? Two, two. Spatial awareness, absolutely. Okay. So we, you know, you think of that football player that's that's unaffected and he's running down the sidelines and he knows that after X amount of steps, he needs to turn his head because the ball is going to be right there and he's going to be able to catch it, right? right. And a top athlete or even a young athlete will be able to do that. However, when we talk about that person that's had that concussion because now their spatial awareness is wrong and differentiated, those, those mechanisms, that ability to make that turn and leap and make that catch, the, the, the body is not in the same performance level. So now we're going to land awkwardly. Now we're going to land differently. Secondary to that is eye movement. One of the critical things in, in correcting a concussion is correcting eye movement. That's been the key. Mm -hmm. And so what we, we discover is that the eyes have to move symmetrically if we're looking side to side. However, what will happen with a person with a concussion, uh, we saw this yesterday. I worked on a lady that had a brain tumor and we she had to have emergency surgery but the, the surgery just jacked up her brain completely. So we had to fix it. So right. Yesterday was her correction. But what was interesting was her eyes, if I asked her to look side to side, they would do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So the, the issue there is now the brain has to fill in what it believes should be there and may not be there. Hence, here's one of the scenarios. The person's driving along. They need to make a left turn. They think everything's clear because when their eyes scan, they see nothing. And then they turn and they get T-boned. Mm. They get it from the side. And that's because there indeed was a car coming towards them. But their eyes, because of the movement, their brain just filled in what it believed should be there. And wow. so that athlete's, you know, taking the handoff, running up the middle, and then never even sees the person coming down the side. And, and it's that impact that, you know, is what causes these damages. Okay. That's, that's fascinating to me. I did not know that. Yeah. 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 Oh. And then the ramification of that is what's crazy. I mean, we, we had a great story, a great um, case. And, and all, all these cases are great only because they resolve. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, let's just right. face it. And, and of course, it's not me. It's it's the creator ahead. I'm just, yeah, right. So I'm just yep. going to be very clear. Give the body what it needs to clear it up to Absolutely. let it feel like it was right. designed to heal. Yes, exactly. Thank you. So, um, but this gal, um, this gal was playing rugby uh, for a um, semi pro team, and she got hit from two sides at once, and uh, she was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she went to Stanford University Hospital for 21 days. And in those 21 days, um, they couldn't really figure her out. They couldn't, you know, they, they saw it wasn't a brain bleed. They saw it wasn't a, a, a nervous system trauma, but they couldn't really figure her out. In time, she regained uh, both arms and her one leg, but the other leg was just non-functional. Wow. So I told her parents, I talked to the mother and I said, you just need to get her down here. And so the mother went and picked her up and drove her down here. And um, and it was really cool because in three hours, I had all the power back in her leg. And in that first day, she took three steps. In and three this hours. Was we put this on social media and it blew up and it blew up to such a degree that um, our CBS network here in L.A., which is like the biggest one, New York and L.A. are the two biggest CBS networks. They picked it up and they did almost like a four and a half, five minute um, story on it. Wow. So can you share that with your audience? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, all right. Let me put this up. This is amazing. Let me hit a couple of buttons here. Make sure I'm doing it right. All right. Here we go. 
That's not the one I wanted. <laughs> it's coming, people. It's coming. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. And if you're not on YouTube watching this, you'll you'll uh, have to jump to YouTube and see this amazing video. I was in awe when I saw this. Yeah, there we go. Rachel okay. Bell could have played basketball overseas before realizing her passion was in chiropractic. After entering uh, Cooper's, Cooperstown Chiropractic in uh, Fullerton, she received a full ride scholarship to play rugby. Earlier this year, she suffered a devastating injury, jeopardizing her ability to walk. But she found hope back in Cooperstown. Our Chris Harry now has more on this week's edition of Hometown Hero. Hometown Hero, sponsored by Rotolo Chevrolet. My family is very athletic. We're all very competitive. My brothers went to BYU. They played football there. My brother just had his pro day for the NFL. My sisters, they played volleyball and basketball in high school. I played basketball in undergrad. In grad school, I just started rugby. What brought you to rugby? It put me in a great position for like my body, um, and it gave me a free ride for school. January 22nd? Yeah. 2022. What do you remember about that day? I was giving the ball off to my cousin, and I got slipped from underneath and then I got hit from behind. I don't remember how I fell, but I remember immediately being in a lot of pain. I was taken into the ambulance. I don't remember anything until waking up Sunday at about four or five. And then I remember seeing my parents and I had asked them, what are you doing here? My mom and them said, we've been waiting for you to wake up. That's when I realized sort of the severity of the incident. So the doctors were saying that I was not able to move my right side at all and my left leg wasn't lifting. When I woke up Sunday, I was getting a little bit of movement on my right side for my leg as well, but my left leg just was not working at all. Were you scared? Absolutely, yeah. But I, was, I wasn't I was also trying to be because I felt like everything later on was going to be okay. You got it. Come on, you can do it. Dr. Cooper's office is where you interned. Mm -hmm. Ready? And Go. this is your passion and you were able to get the help you needed. Um, I'm grateful for everyone that's um, supported me. This office has carried me. The first day I got here, I took three steps. Um, and it was with help, but it was three steps, and I knew that there was hope. Why is this different? It's different because she's so special and because she's one of us. When I see her future, I see her being able to be that person that's speaking on stage that we all go to and says, you know, I was paralyzed. You know, you think you got a bat. I couldn't move and look at me now. But she was intubated. So she was on a ventilator. And that's, that's pretty scary stuff. Well, but after that, I was able to FaceTime her. And really what our conversation came to was this. Regardless if you want this to or not, it's going to define you. Are you going to be defined as a victim or are you going to be defined as a, a champion? Are you going to inspire the world or are you going to let this just succumb? She immediately said, I'm a champion. Life has a funny way of working things out. It almost is like this was meant to be to get Rachel better. Yeah, exactly what I felt. And she was supported by family and a team. All of us together were able to put together such a, a miracle for her. I feel like I can keep going. Um, and it motivates me, honestly, often to just keep working towards the goal of walking again. And later on, hopefully, just being back to my normal self. I don't know about you. I had goosebumps. That was incredible. So inspiring. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I love it. I love it. I Isn't still cool? cry. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was, it was, it was remarkable to be a part of, and I'm so grateful. And, um, and later, which is crazy, she actually called me a couple months later and said, will you clear me so I can go back to rugby? What? Yeah. And so now she's the girl that was, that was going to be paralyzed really probably forever. Yeah. You know, right. <laughs> no never, she was never going to play rugby again. No, she wasn't ever going to walk again. Or if she did, she was going to be walking with, I, she, she couldn't even walk with a walker. You saw that, yeah. those pictures of us by the table and one of my, my team members holding her upright. But that was, that's when we got power back in her legs. Wow. So, <clears throat> so, so that's one of the really cool stories. And then, you know, that's one of those ones where, uh, 
you know, it happens in, and as a provider, you know, you need to step in mm -hmm. because this yeah. girl's change, life's going to change forever. And, and she was one of my interns. So that, you know, brought a whole nother level of consciousness to us. Hang on. Excuse me. Um, but, you know, now, now that we have this awareness that this happens now, now let's kind of go through like the education. Right. Well, yeah. Let's talk there's, about that. there's things that are going to happen with a concussion that the parent needs to know. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me. And the very first thing is going to be that gut dysregulation. The right. bowels are going to change. And, and I've always learned that when you get hit in the head, you get leaky brain. Leaky brain always means leaky gut. Is that yeah, right? That's completely true. Yeah. So, so now let's go through the scenario of what most common, the most common manifestation of this is. So let's say you've got a child that's an athlete and they have a trauma and um, the coach or the trainer uh, recognizes this and says, hey, you know, we need to get some help. You need to take the, baby, the child to the hospital. Fully appropriate. So in the hospital, what they're going to do is they're going to evaluate. And 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 what they're going to really do is evaluate radiographically. They're going to make sure that this child's not having a brain bleed. Correct. And, and then that's appropriate. However, where the antiquated part of this comes and really where the danger of this comes is that when it's not a brain bleed, Pretty much what they're going to come back in is they're going to say, hey, listen, uh, you know, you kind of dodged the bullet. Um, here's some Tylenol. Take some days off. Don't look at your screen. Just, you know, sit in a dark room, do nothing. Right. And, and right. why that's dangerous and why that's antiquated. And, and they're not intentionally trying to hurt your child. I mean, that's not what they're doing. They just don't have the most recent information because what the most recent information says is that given that child something like Tylenol, or any over-the-counter non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, so Motrin, Advil, you know, any of those things. In the research, it actually calls it resolution toxic. Wow. And, and that, that's literally the terminology. But why it's toxic to the resolution is very specifically because Tylenol blocks glutathione. Mm -hmm. So when we say, hang on, oh, a little drink of water. So when we say that the, the blood-brain barrier, <clears throat> we know within about three hours is going to start to leak. It's going to start to open up, and now we can have things penetrate through there. And what closes that down is glutathione. Okay. And glutathione okay. comes from, like, dark green leafy vegetables. Glutathione comes from pistachios, right? <clears throat> Great choices. Um, but what's going to inhibit glutathione is Tylenol. So by giving that person Tylenol, essentially what we're doing is we're keeping that leaky brain, blood brain barrier open for a long, longer period of time. And what we know is that whatever the toxic overload that's in that person at that time is what's going to go and penetrate deep into the brain. And you're just going right. deeper and deeper. Yeah. And then the other part that makes this dangerous is that in that time, you know, we, we, we know this concussion is about a three week long time frame. And, and and that's really where we're going to get our best work done. And if we can get that work done in that timeline, you know, we have a great chance of resolution. Now, I will also say this, and I've discovered this, that an untreated head injury is still an untreated head injury. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it happened six years ago or if it happened 26 years ago, you know, it, it's still that same thing and it still needs to be addressed. Right. Right. But we do. We got that three weeks of like, this is crucial time. <clears throat> and this is not a time when, you know, that athlete should go back to like jogging or running or, you know, the, those 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 things are are just not the most appropriate thing. And um, and but but something like an adjustment from the chiropractor is a brilliant thing because that's a passive activity that's going to help re-regulate uh, brain and nervous system function. And then the other thing we've discovered is we've discovered with every concussion, there is absolutely a cervical injury. There is absolutely something happening in the cervical spine that's preventing the cerebral spinal fluid that flows around the brain, bathes the brain, brings nutrients to the brain, gets rid of waste products, but it's getting clogged almost like a, a, a clogged up toilet. 
So is. is that just for a, uh, a physical concussion or is that chemical and biological too? Yeah, it's, it's okay. both. It's all of them. So in the process that we've developed in the research that I came across, you know, what they recommend is that <clears throat> in that person, we start with an upper cervical adjustment only in the first day or two of treatment. And so that way we have no energy expenditure going anywhere else, but allowing that cerebral spinal fluid to flow. But, right. but right. I was telling you about that lady with the brain tumor. And it was interesting because when I did her first adjustment um, last week, she literally said that to me. She's like, Dr. Cooper, she goes, that was like the toilet flushing in my head. Wow. Yeah. It was pretty remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. So why the cervical? Why does it land there? Why it lands there is because cerebral spinal fluid is flows and it goes around the brain and it goes down the spinal cord and it takes 24 hours to make that full circulation from top to bottom. That is unless it's clogged. And sure. what we know is that with the head being so heavy, and that whipping action that's going to happen upon impact, let's like in the physical concussion, then what we're going to actually do is we're going to actually move those cervical bones. But in, as soon as we do that, now we've impeded upon that cerebral spinal fluid flow. Right. So tell us about the chemical, though. So I, I think people can Perfect. understand the physical, you know, yeah. effect on the cervical. How does the, the chemical and the biological affect the cervical? And why is that adjustment so important? Well, so that so the, the most interesting thing is that we want to always clear that pathway. Okay. So what we find is that in these cases, there's always two things that are present biochemically. Number one is toxicity and number two is deficiency. So there's something that generally is there that's not supposed to be there. So there is some kind of biochemical poison or toxin that's preventing the normal healing aspect of that. In that scenario, the brain has identified and the body has identified that toxic overload. But then what it's going to do is it's going to create almost like an antigen antibody type of reaction. So you can think of like, you know, the person that's allergic to wheat or gluten, you know, and how their body has a reaction. Well, in this scenario, the body is going to have a reaction or what it's going to do is it's going to cause the muscles to tighten up to prevent more injury. And so okay. when it comes up, the most likely place and the most problematic area that that's going to happen is going to be in the cervical spine. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so we're just we're just blocking the flow of that toxic, uh, you know, stuff to get through the body. So let me let me tease it out just a little bit, if I may. So if you have a baby mm -hmm. who was born toxic, could they mm -hmm. be born with a chemical concussion? Absolutely. Okay. Remember that research that came out of Canada a couple of years ago? They showed first time first time moms. And they were looking at their breast milk had over 91 separate toxic chemicals. Yeah. Like in the most perfect food that there is, which is breast milk, designed specifically for that child by the mother's body in conjunction with that child. And we're already finding 91 separate toxins. Right. Which is why it's so important to, to detox before you ever get pregnant. Things I wish I would have known. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. when I'm looking back to my daughter, you know, she, she was born sensitive, I would say. And yeah. I think a lot of that now that I have the knowledge that I have, you know, 16 years later that, and you're saying there's a concussion there, like neurologically, right. you know, she was, she had toxins. I know she had toxins. And then right. you know, the way her birth happened, she ended up getting um, a vitamin K shot that I didn't necessarily want her to have. She's yeah. never had any other vaccinations, but she did get that one. And I feel in my mama gut, you know, even at that time that that caused a lot of that neurological sensitivity, not to mention the toxins that I dumped into her. Right. So, I fully agree with you. Yeah. So you take this child who's had this, you know, chemical concussion and then, right. you know, age six, they get an actual physical concussion. And then I just think, you know, so many things were compounded. And I think that can probably be a scenario. Maybe some of the moms listening are like, something similar has happened, you know, right. can see where this is going. So I think you sharing this today is yeah. amazing. Can I, can I share one other little quick screen for you so we can just kind of go the, Oh, sure. Go ahead. Here. Yeah. Okay. I think this is great. Okay. So this is what we, so when I go out and I'll talk to groups or, and I teach like 
in the neurology class at the university that's right by my office, this is kind of what I show them. And I show them, these are the 12 things we want to look at. Number one, concussion and intestinal permeability. So, right, leaky gut, um, problems with bowels, concussion and central processing of the viscera. In other words, this is the gut-brain connection and the problem there. Uh, immune system dysregulation is number three. In other words, now all of a sudden you have this child that's got um, unexplained fevers, right. unexplained right. illness, always sick. That your child's always sick. This is like you just need to call us. That's just what it is. Uh, the breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. We talked about glutathione. We talked about Tylenol. We talked about like children's Tylenol. This is terrible. Concussion and blood pressure. It's a very interesting thing. There's a high percentage of people that are going to have either high blood pressure or low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. The concussion on the adrenal glands and the hormones. Here's the statistic. As low as 25% of people that have had this happen, and as high as 100% will have adrenal insufficiency. So let me pull this down really quick so you and I can talk. Okay. So <clears throat> what's adrenal, in, you know, what, what does that look like? Yeah. Uh, stress, right. The adrenal glands make adrenaline. Adrenaline is your fight or flight. It's how well you handle stress. So number one, it's stress handling. Number two, adrenaline keeps the same amount of oxygenated blood in your brain, whether you're laying down or standing up. And so when your adrenals are weak, when you lay down and you jump up real fast, you get like, like woozy or dizzy or lightheaded. That's right. an adrenal issue, right? The adrenals keep the pupils of the eyes constricted in the bright sun. So those people that are always like squinting or always have to have sunglasses on, right? That's mm -hmm. an adrenal issue. And then the other part of the adrenal makes the corticosteroids. And that's what prevents us from having these anaphylactic reactions. So if you've got a child that, you know, eats a peanut and then they're going to like turn into the marshmallow man. Guess what? That's an adrenal problem, right. right? That needs to be addressed. And that's exactly what we're talking about. That if that is your child, that's, that's what we're looking at. And yeah. Uh, uh, and then and then the other hormones on number six could be like as we get to a 16 year old the, the dysregulation of her menstrual cycle right and that's right. One, that's one of the huge ones i see where you know like i had one girl that had her concussion uh they thought you know they treated it medically her mom's a nurse practitioner so they thought they got everything done except for she was having vaginal bleeding for two hundred days Eek. yeah so it thankfully wow. took us three days to stop that okay and even better she starts chiropractic school in the fall that's awesome so that is awesome uh hydration huge fat consumption huge mm -hmm. so what are we talking about fat consumption um <coughs> excuse me so if you ate an avocado, if you put olive oil on your salad, you had fish today, you know, that oil is so easy to break down. It's going to break down in a day. But you stop at Chick-fil-A and you have, you know, a deep fried chicken sandwich or you have French fries uh, or you're eating Doritos, those oils take us 142 days to break down. Right. They're half like Dan Papa taught me that. Crazy. Yeah. Right. And then in, if those coalesce into the artery and create a plaque, that plaque requires 680 days to re remove. You know, so when we talk about those oils, we always talk about the three S's, the three C's and rated PG. And so the three S's are soy, sunflower and safflower. Where do you find those? Crackers, chips, all of those kinds of things. That's where you find them. The three C's, corn, canola, and cotton seed. Horrible. Horrible. The, They're the, awful. P, the, the P is peanut and palm. Uh-huh. And, and and those are the most toxic oils. And and I saw an, an article. I'm just gonna go off this, sorry, for a second, but it was brilliant. I mean, back to like education and motivation. Um there was a research article that looked at the damage done by a person smoking. They smoked a pack of cigarettes a day for 25 years. Mm-hmm. They compared that to a person that had these heavy and damaging oils in their diet and consumed them on a regular basis for five years. Guess which one of those two groups had the most amount of damage? 
the people who ate the crappy oils. People that, isn't that hard to believe? Because you're thinking about like, wait a minute, you know, my kid's an eighth grader, you know, or, and now, you know, he was one from eighth grade to high school and life's been topsy turvy. So we eat out a lot of times and he goes out with his friends and it's the, you know, the French fries and da da da, right? And, and you're saying that child now has more damage than a person that smokes a pack of cigarettes for 25 years and they smoke daily. I know it sounds crazy, but it's so true. I mean, the research confirms yeah, it, all of that. What it is, right? right? Yeah. So that's also why, like in this list, and I'll go back to this list real, real quick. Um, you know, we talk about the oils and making sure we got the right oils. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. That, that has to do with fat consumption. Now we're going to talk about microglial, microglial priming. Uh, okay, the tell us that. Part of me. What is microglial priming? What is that? Okay, so priming is when you have something come and make an impact, but now it kind of changes the course uh, forward from there. So in other words, sometimes there might be like a medication that if we give a certain person that if something else happens, that medication blocked their natural ability to heal. Like we think okay. about like somebody that's on a blood thinner and then they fall and, you know, scratch themselves and then they bleed and bleed and bleed. Right, that's called priming. The microglia are really interesting little creatures, and they're in the brain and in the nervous system. And what they do, it, it, they're kind of like they're kind of like the custodian in a big building. You know, they polish the brass, they yeah, wax yeah, yeah. the floor, right? They keep the place clean, right? That's what they do. But in this trauma, what they're done, and and, and this is a crazy example, but it's really almost exactly true. It's almost like if you give them an assault rifle and told them anybody that comes open fire. Okay. So now you're taking this custodian and you're making them like a soldier with very little, you know, ability to um, control. And so, you know, th this is where these long-term damages happen. Okay. Because the microglia are just so uh, out of control. Um, so coming back to fixing the microglia is fixing not only the brain, but fixing the mitochondria, right? The powerhouse of the cell. Right, right. That's where we get our energy. Yeah. That's, that's how we fix those, right? And that's kind of the same thing with that injured neuron. When the, when the neuron's injured, I mean, you have to up, upregulate the uh, mitochondria. Mm -hmm. So you want to touch on that one real quick? I, mean, I, would, I would love to. I'm, I'm trying to process this. I'm, I'm stuck on the microglial. So you have to fix the, mi you have to fix the mi mitochondria in order to change yeah. the microglial is what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. And that's the pathway to, to correction. Right? Okay. So uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Well, so again, um, inside the each cell is this, this powerhouse. It's like the battery on your cell phone. And mm -hmm. if your cell phone goes dead, you know, it's not really valuable to you. You know, and if you had no way of charging it, that amazing device has got no value whatsoever. So inside the microglia, um, the, the mitochondria is what helps regulate and normalize its activity. Okay. But if damage, um, they, like I said, they, they take on this whole new um, role that they were never designed to do. And so little by little, what we have to do is we have to get them back to being the custodian and not being the soldier. Okay. We do that by upregulating mitochondria. Got it. Now, what gets in the way of mitochondrial healing? Well, so remember, if you, you remember when we went in school, when you open up a, 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 micro, a mitochondria, inside are these little things that kind of look like batteries, and they're yeah. called ribosomes. Mm -hmm. Remember that? We do. So what makes a ribosome different than every other cell in your body is that every cell in your body requires DNA, so that double strand of genetic information um, that regulates it. And a ribosome is different because it is the only part of our body that exclusively uses RNA, mm -hmm. a single strand of genetic information. And why is that important? That's important because bacteria are a single strand of genetic information. Okay. So how does most antibiotics work? Most antibiotics are RNA scavengers. Correct. So they just go through the body and they look for RNA. And once they find it, they just pop it out. And whatever's connected to it, it's going to just collapse and die. Mm -hmm. But that means that 
if the food that this parent's feeding her family is going to be meats, chicken that have been fed with antibiotics, I mean, you can't cook it out. No, so it, once, it's in there. It's yeah. It's once it's in the meat, it's it, it's in you. Once it's in you, it's going to attack the ribosome. <clears throat> and once it destroys the ribosomes, mitochondria has no ability to recover. Right. Right. That's why this like antibiotic resistance happens. That's why people get, you know, repeated use of antibiotics. That's why we you know when you're when you're 40 some years old and you had so many antibiotics as a kid, you're still trying right. to detox right. the stuff out of you because your mitochondria are messed up. Right. And remember that the number one clinical um, condition that we see that's completely related to that is um, part of fatigue syndrome. Right. Right. Yeah, and I think always mitochondria and given the uh, the situation in the world you know you know all, all of us going through you know the whole viral situation and stuff that we had and you know the people who have gotten the rna vaccine yeah they're the jab or whatever you want to call it um that they, you have to know that that's affecting your mitochondria yeah deeply the ribosome yeah, yeah. yeah. so now are you familiar with um black cumin seed yes i love black cumin seed do you know what it was just proved to be able to do? What is that? Tell us. Attach to the spike protein. I love to hear that. Yeah. So the spike protein, I mean, what we know about it is that it's got unlimited reproductive cycles. We just don't know for how long. This is why the, the danger of of boosters is, right. is so prevalent. But, you know, I, I always explain a spike protein being like a spiked bowling ball. You know, imagine going bowling with the spike bowling ball. Everything it touches is going to get destroyed, whether it's right. the, the bowling alley or the pins or the mechanism that brings it back. Um, <clears throat> but black cumin seed can actually attach to that and neutralize the um, the spike protein. That is amazing to know. I'd love to read that research. That's great. Yeah, that just brand new. I saw it maybe within the month. Okay. All right. I'll put that in the show notes so everybody can read that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Super cool. That is so cool. So go back to the mitochondria. So what do you what are we doing to to fix that? Well, so number one, we have to remove all of the antibiotics. We have to remove all of the things that are going to cause it to be toxic and to downregulate. But again, foods that help build mitochondria are foods like pistachios. Yeah. Right? And I will tell you, my daughter pistachios. after her concussion, she just wanted pistachios. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so so here's one of the cool things. I don't know, um, I don't know if you've recognized this or not, but um, children are a lot like animals in a certain way. That if you have an animal that's sick and you have a nutrient that their body needs for recovery, you can put it on their hand. It doesn't matter what it tastes like; they'll eat it right off your hand. Eat it, yeah. And that's the same with kids. They just innately know what their body needs and when you offer them the right thing for the solution they just gobble it down mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah but sometimes it, the the educated mind grows then the innate mind uh kind of lessens so it does you know, unfortunately so we have to yeah we have to relearn or unlearn yeah that's exactly right yeah. so so with all of these discussions you know what my what my bottom line would be is that to that parent that has this child, you know, the, the motivation to, to reach out and to, to consider care. I mean, and I literally have people that fly down to Southern California because I mean, like Disneyland's around the corner, right? Right. So right. If you're going to spend a week at Disneyland, spend four or five days with us and let us get this under control. And, um, and that's something that we can do. And then the other thing is, is that our, our company called Concussion CPR, and that's our program. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That's my program aimed at doctors, teaching doctors around the world how to do this work. Mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, and, and for any of your listeners, too, they can just go on our website. It's really more designed for the doctor, but you can look around. And, and yeah. again, it would also give, allow you to um, get in contact with us, but it's it's con it's www.concussions.solution. Concussions.solution. Okay. We'll yeah, put that right. in the notes and stuff too. Right. Yeah. So oh, actually concussion singular solutions plural. Okay. Got it. And it's not a dot com or dot 
yeah, it's not a dot com or dot net or anything, but it's concussion dot solution. Okay. And then that way, you know, if you've got people that need to reach out and say, you know, what do I do with this? Then, then we have access to be able to communicate with them and share that. that yeah. That yeah. So we talked about, you know, basic conventional treatment when you end up in the ER and then parents are told to, you know, just monitor. Right. So, I mean, there's an option to come to you, right? And then there's, are you, do you have a, on your website, doctors that you have trained in this particular concussion protocol where they could find them? Yeah, we're building all of that out. So right. first of all, it would just be like a general conversation. Like, you know, do you live in Pennsylvania? Do you live in Oregon? Are you in Newport Beach? You know, where do you live? And let's get you the, the best yeah. person, the closest person. And so we do have doctors filtered and offices filtered throughout the United States. Um, and and then again, and the other option is you, you, there. There's always there's always different options. We you know we can always mm -hmm. do it like a Zoom call, and you know help that person if they've got somebody or they just need specialized help. And you know ultimately they can also just come into Cooperstown. Right, right. So I know like my daughter had her concussion when she was six, and that was a long yeah. journey. And yeah. then a year ago, actually, this past weekend was she had her second concussion, physical concussion, yeah. um, she fell off a horse. So the, she's a jumper. She's, you know, equine jumping. And so the horse didn't jump, but she did kind of thing. And so she landed right. on there. And so it's been a year. And so we immediately yeah. the next day, we got her adjusted. Um, yeah, good. My colleague is a functional neurologist. She's a friend next morning, adjusted. She did functional neurology on it. We did that whole, whole, whole thing with her. So good. it was amazing to watch the yeah. turnaround, you know, with that, you know, she's done hyperbaric, of course, you know, with me as well, a mom, she's, you know, eating fat and protein all the time. And that's all she was right. craving was anything with fat and anything with protein. Um, you know, more of a keto diet. She did fasting. She did, you know, all these things. And so we still have residual, uh, residual issues and stuff going on with her. And so where does, you know, so I, I have a way of what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I have a way of identifying what those are. Okay. So, so we actually have developed a questionnaire that she can fill out to us and we can just, you know, text it to her and she can text it right back to me. But then I will know, I'll, I'll number one, know, is this resolved? Mm -hmm. So you, you might have a scenario where you're like, I think it's resolved. I'm not sure. That's how we'll know. Um, and if it's not resolved, then we'll be able to target whether it's just a nutritional thing that you can handle at home. Mm -hmm. Is it something that, you know, is going to need some, some one-on-one -on -one work, we can identify all those things. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm coughing we'll more that. today than I've coughed in my life. <laughs> it's the air, right? <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. So we'll definitely do that for her. So yeah. trying to figure happy out, to do that for out you. what's going on. Yeah. 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 And, and happy to do that with any of your, your uh, listeners that have had that scenario and just want to know, you know, where are we? And, you know, we can, we can send that, that text to them. They can fill it out. They can send it back. And then we can just find a time that we can do like a quick um, consultation and see what we need to do. Okay. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Sometimes we get those tickles in our throats and they just won't come out. Yeah, exactly. Right. You need to gargle really some oil. Water. Yeah. <laughs> gargle some oil and that'll take that away. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were going to tell a parent, you know, best case scenario, what they should do there, we'll just start with a physical concussion first. Yeah. Kids mucks their head. What do they do that? First that thing we want to do is we want to, um, we want to get that glutathione back into the brain. And we also want to make sure that we reposition any cranial bones that might have been uh, moved by the trauma. Okay. <clears throat> so again, if the baseball bat hit him on the side of the head, right, that frontal bone could have shifted. Right. But once it shifted, then we've changed the cerebral spinal fluid on the inside. Right. Right. So how do we reposition bones in the cranium? Well, we think about the newborn baby that was born vaginally and they kind of have the mouth-shaped head. How yeah. we get their head to get back? You start breastfeeding them. So the action of sucking, right, something thick, like through a straw, will actually put those bones back in place. The very first thing I would do 
because I would tell that person, that parent, make them like a green smoothie or mm -hmm. you know, find a place like a Jamba Juice that can make not something that's overloaded with sugar because sugar will penetrate that blood brain barrier and it's going to be breached open by now. But we want something that will help that, that movement of those bones and rebuilding that glutathione. Okay. And that's something that we would do immediately within the, you know, the first three or four hours. And that would be something I would repeat for the next few days. Um, that, that would be my immediate first aid. Okay. Right. 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 And, and then as you say, you know, looking at detoxifying the child, looking at, uh, being really strict control of the diet. We're not going to go to McDonald's cause we celebrated that, you know, the CAT scan came out fine. Right. Or right. Chick -fil -A right. Or, Don't you know, go there. <laughs> right. We're not doing that. Um, the, the getting that upper cervical adjustment from the chiropractor is critically important. That's going to open up that cerebral spinal fluid flow. And then hopefully your provider is trained to be able to look at all the aspects of a concussion and, and put those things together because there's a physical component, there's a biochemical component, there's like, you know, a mental and emotional component. Right. And then right. it's also that possibility of the shifting of the cranial bones. And yeah. so all of those things have to be addressed and, and, and looked at and addressed. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Those are really great tips. Um, so we're talking about, say, uh, people are thinking, well, maybe my kid has a chemical concussion. They've never schmuck their head. They've never done right. you know that they they've been vaccinated or, you know, just exposure, yeah. in the womb, whatever it might be. You know, That's I talk right. about detox. I'm a detox specialist. And so I help detox. easy for us to identify. Yeah, right. So do you normally use like osquestry scales with your patients? Like, do they, do they have like some of those like uh, questionnaires that they can fill out to, and you can uh, evaluate and find out like, okay, it could be this or it could be that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way. That's the easiest way. Especially if it's, yeah, especially with somebody that's, you know, a, a distance away, mm -hmm. you know, that would be the first thing I would do is I would just text them that questionnaire and based on the results, then I would know that, yeah, this is a toxic overwhelm or it's not. Um, you did, uh, you did the program with Danny Pompa, right? Yeah. I'm, I, yeah. I'm one of his practitioners. Yep. Yeah. So Danny and I are really very, very good friends. As a matter of fact, Dan and Mary Lee was at my son's wedding. Aww, uh, I love it. So they've been very, very good friends. And, and so one of the things that I really dug that Danny had given me a long time ago was that, um, that eye test. Oh, the eye uh, test is amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So if you have that person come into your center, and as a matter of fact, you can even do it online, I think. You can. Yeah. The VC. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the visual contrast sensitivity test. Yep. Is that what it's called? It yeah. is. So mm -hmm. that that's that's a great way. And you know, if you want to put those into your notes, that's a great way that if a parent listening to this goes, ooh, you know what I wonder. You know, I, I, all of these things are making sense. I'm, you know, I know my child's got these behavioral things. I know they've got these digestive problems. I know that they're really not handling stress and they talk about getting dizzy quickly. You know, they're not able to concentrate. Maybe this is the case, you mm -hmm. know, I, they can go and take that test and send that to you and send it to me or right. either. And, and we would, we would be able to interpret those results instantaneously and know like, okay, here's where we got to go with this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause let's be honest, nobody passes the test <laughs> really. And like, and unless then, somebody been detoxing, I mean, rarely, we'll say rarely. Yeah. Passes yeah, yeah. The no, rarely no, passes no. the test yeah. because all of us are so toxic. So I would say yeah. majority of the population probably has a chemical concussion. Yeah. yeah. Totally right. Yeah. And that's, that's really cool. You know, thank, think you, thank you for that thought. Cause I was just thinking like each, each month we tried to do something different in our office just for kind of coolness and fun. Yeah. Um, we, we, we've got that heart sound recorder for those people that have taken the shot um, and been able to normalize parts now after the damage done with myocarditis and such. Nice. And so we've been running that, but um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't done the, um, the visual contrast sensitivity test in a few years. And that would be a fun thing to have all of our practice members just do to look for chemical concussions right right yeah thank you oh this has opened my my mind so much today i'm so excited about this conversation so yeah. 
If you had some parting words to tell our audience, and we're going to have to have you back on because there's so many more questions I could ask. We could talk for like three hours. So mm -hmm. yeah. What would you want to say to the listeners out there, knowing that most of the people who are listening to me are probably moms? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you made a comment earlier. You, you talked about what, something happened with your daughter and the mom's intuition. And girl, that's a hundred percent accurate. And it always is accurate. Right. And right. For, for your moms listening to this, when they know, they know. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that they might not be able to get the doctor or the therapist or whomever else to come into agreement or to see what they see, but they know. And, and it's that kind of person that needs to reach out to someone like you or me yeah. to where we can help them get to the place that they need to get. You know, right. Um, right. I, I would say our avatar is that mom that's got two or three kids and, you know, her parents live close and she wears yoga pants, but she doesn't always go to yoga. Right. And she knows that she knows what's right, but she just needs that education and inspiration, that place of hope where this miracle that she needs. Can yeah. Be. Yeah. And, and reassurance yeah. that she's not crazy. Yeah. Totally. totally yeah. Right. I still need that myself. I mean, we had an issue with um, a, a dental thing that my, my daughter had ongoing issues with. Yeah. And I'm like in my mama gun, I'm like, there's something else going on here. And, you know, just processing it through and so you know you go see somebody else and like hey can you do this for me and like yeah I confirmed it right and so right. you know that's why we weren't progressing you know dentally um, right you just you, you just have to have that confirmation from somebody who doesn't think you're crazy right right so yeah, yeah I look I only look crazy I'm not actually crazy I know I might be crazy and I've been no. told before you know, like crazy lady you know <laughs> anyway <laughs> Yeah, that's I, right. I think you I, and I are going to be friends for a long time. Yep, yep, definitely. Well, Dr. Well, Ken, this was amazing. Um, I think I this is going to be very educational, eye-opening. I think it's going to bring a lot of people hope just listening to this. And right. I do want to have you back on because there's so much more we could talk about. So much more. So I will put all of your information in the show notes. I'm okay. gonna personally take your, I'm going to, I want that questionnaire for my daughter. Yep. And hopefully for Happy myself. to do that. So, so we, we can go through that and any practitioners listening, you know, we're going to put that in the show notes too, for your concussion um, protocol yeah. training, concussion, concussion, CPR, concussion, CPR training. Yeah. I think that, that's fantastic. On, on a mission to save the world's brains. Yeah. Cause I always tell people we're top down. And so if we don't fix the brain, nothing below the neck, it doesn't matter. You can right. work on the heart all you want. You can work on the liver all you want, but if you don't work on the brain, right, it doesn't matter. So you're exactly right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on this with me and I'll look forward to having you on in the future. And thank you everyone for listening and um, post your comments below and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.